Hey, I'm Tom Graham for Envato Tuts Plus, and I've been editing video in one way or another on many different platforms for about 15 years now. If you're looking to learn how to edit videos for the very first time right now, I'm sure it's a pretty daunting task. Where do you start? What program do you use? Well, I'm gonna make it easy for you. Go and download DaVinci Resolve. It's completely free and it's packed full of great tools for beginners and editors of any level. But for the next 90 minutes, I'm gonna sit with you and take you through the process of editing. I'm going to walk you through all of the basic tools that you need to know in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm also gonna step you through the fundamentals of editing, why we make certain choices, what the processes are, and kind of where the edit can take you as you're working on it. We'll look at how to make selects, which is basically picking the best take out of, in this case, an interview. We'll look at adding B-roll to that. We'll also look at adding some great assets from Envato Elements, like stock music, stock footage, fonts, and video templates. I'll show you the fundamentals of color grading, and we'll also do a very basic sound mix at the end so that you can get your project out the door to a very happy client. Now, if you've never touched video editing software before, this is the video for you. Sit with me and I'll show you from start to finish all the processes that you need to know. But if you are also a seasoned video editor and you're just looking to learn DaVinci Resolve for the first time, you're also in the right place. I'll walk through the entire program from a top level and show you everything that you need to know. Now I mentioned Invito Elements before and we'll be using a bunch of assets in this tutorial from Invito Elements. It's a super easy to use subscription-based service that gives you access to millions of digital assets like stock footage, stock photos, stock music, fonts, video templates, and heaps more. Check out the link in the description below today to see what is on offer. You get unlimited downloads of all of these assets. The licensing is really simple, so you can just use the assets in your projects right away. Don't have to think about it. And you can cancel the subscription at any time. So there's literally no reason why you shouldn't check it out today. But right now, we're going to jump in to DaVinci Resolve. All right, well, first things first, we've got to open up DaVinci Resolve. So let's do that right now. And you can see that I'm using DaVinci Resolve Studio 17. Now this is the paid studio version of DaVinci Resolve. There is of course the free version of DaVinci Resolve, which is almost as powerful as the studio version. The studio version, you get a few extra little bells and whistles, but for the most part, every single thing I show you today, you can do in the free version. So maybe right now, go to the Blackmagic Design website, download DaVinci Resolve, the free version, and, uh, and click along with me if you haven't used it before. And like I said in the intro, this is a complete beginner tutorial. I'm not gonna show you every single thing that is in DaVinci Resolve because we'll be here all day. What I will show you is how to open up DaVinci Resolve for the first time, set your project up, learn generally where everything is and start editing. And if you've never edited any videos before, I'm going to take you through my process and the process that I kind of learned when I first started editing videos in a completely different program. So the fundamentals of editing actually cross over to any other platform. So you can take what you'll learn in this video and apply it to other programs like Premiere Pro or Final Cut. So this is what it looks like when you first open up DaVinci Resolve 17. Now, when you first open it, you'll just see Untitled Project. You won't see this old projects bin. That's uh, where all of my old projects are. I just like to keep things nice and neat. Uh, and you may only see it like this. Now, what you wanna do on the top left here, that button that I just clicked to pop that in and out, that shows your databases section. Now, DaVinci Resolve, it treats uh, your folder where you save things, it calls it a database. And the way you can think about this is if you have used Premiere Pro before or other NLEs like that, generally you have scratch disks and you have folders on your system where you save all of your projects. So that's what databases are in DaVinci Resolve. Now, when you first install DaVinci Resolve, it will just automatically create a local database on your computer. But if you're working from a portable hard drive or, or even a server or something like that, and you wanna create a new database on that disk, how do you do that? Well, in this section here, if you create a new database down the bottom and you click on disk and you name it, new database, or whatever you wanna call it, uh, and then you browse for that location, I'll just do it on the desktop here and hit create. You'll see it's created a new database on the desktop here and that is also reflected over on the disk section in this new database. So for me, because I just always work on this machine, I tend to just leave it on the local database that DaVinci Resolve creates. But if I was ever to work on a project which I knew I might work on another machine or was handing it off to another editor, I would make that new database onto a removable hard drive. So once all this is done, you just wanna create a new project, jump into an edit. You can just double click on this untitled project here or you can hit new project down the bottom. I'm gonna double click and go into untitled project. Now, if you hit Command S, I'm on a Mac. Obviously, uh, everything on PC translates over. Just you know, swap your command and control. I'll let you work that out. I'm gonna hit Command S and just save this current project. So we're actually gonna call this ride a bike 
because I'm going to be using some footage I shot a few years ago uh, for a local bike workshop in Melbourne. I'm going to be repurposing that for the sake of this tutorial. So I'm going to go through the process of recutting that little micro documentary. It's called Ride a Bike. So now this project will be saved as Ride a Bike. You can see that reflected in the top of the screen here. This is DaVinci Resolve. So if you've never seen the program before, this is what it looks like when you first open it. This is it, plain, bare bones. And what you'll see is it's, it's relatively easy and straightforward to work out. On the bottom of the page here, you've got seven different tabs. And effectively, these are almost like seven different programs within one program. So if you think about Premiere Pro being part of the Adobe suite, you've got Premiere, After Effects, Media Encoder, things like that, that would relate to edit, fusion and deliver in this instance. So what's great about DaVinci Resolve, <laughs> even better than it being for the most part, a free piece of software, you've actually got an entire suite of programs all in one. So let's work through them quickly. And you'll kind of see that things work from left to right in DaVinci Resolve. So if you go over onto the left here, media, this is where you start bringing in all of your footage that you want to start working with, any media that you are working with. That goes for your rushes, uh, you know, music, graphics, things like that. We'll get into that shortly. Cut is DaVinci's kind of modern approach to editing. It's the speed editor, really. Um, it takes a lot of cues from traditional NLEs, non-linear editors, which are basically like Premiere Pro, uh, Final Cut, uh, Sony Vegas, things like that, uh, and which is reflected in the edit tab here. That's more of a traditional NLE. But in the cut tab, Blackmagic Design, DaVinci Resolve, they have kind of rethought the process basically to get you from raw footage to you know, a uh, relatively polished story as quickly as possible. And then you can move into the edit tab and do more of your finessing. What we're going to do today, we're going to spend probably a lot of time in the edit tab because I think as a new editor, and again, this is a beginner tutorial, as a new editor, it is important to learn the fundamentals and to learn why we do things, uh, kind of learn a little bit of the long way around so that then, you know, down the line, once you get that muscle memory in, you can move over to things like the cut page here and just really power through it. But it is important to know the kind of fundamentals behind why we make certain choices in the edit. So this is the cut page here. And before we move on to the edit, let us know in the comments if you do want to see a more in-depth tutorial about the cut page in DaVinci Resolve. Now the edit tab here is third from the left. This is where we'll spend most of the time today. This is where we will complete our edit. I'll come back to this very shortly and I'll run you through everything you need to know on this page. Moving across, you've got Fusion, and Fusion is basically After Effects, if you're used to the Adobe suite. It's our compositor, it's our VFX software. It is node-based compared to After Effects, which is layer-based, so there can be a little bit of a learning curve when it comes to um, transferring those skills which you may already have from After Effects into Fusion. Uh, it's a bit of a beast, but it is very powerful. Now, again, this is a beginner editor's tutorial, uh, so we won't spend really any time in Fusion today. We'll do a little bit of motion graphics work in the edit tab, which uses stuff from Fusion, um, but in a very drag and drop kind of way. Moving across, you've got color, and now this is what DaVinci Resolve is known for. It's the standout feature. DaVinci Resolve is industry level. It is Hollywood level. This is where all of your favorite films get graded. Uh, there are just some incredibly powerful tools in DaVinci Resolve. You can learn really quickly how to become a, a pretty decent colorist in DaVinci Resolve. It's really easy to understand the fundamentals. Uh, and then once you get further into that journey of becoming a colorist, it goes deep. There is so much you can learn. Now I actually produced a color grading tutorial for DaVinci Resolve. It goes through everything you see on the color page here. I go through my color correction and color grading process. Uh, and I run you through everything that you need to know on this tab. You can check out the link, it'll be up here right now or in the description below. But yeah, if you're not already subscribed to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel, get subscribed now because we are constantly putting out great content like this to help you become better editors, better colorists, uh, you know, better illustrators, all of that great stuff. So go check it out right now. Moving on to Fairlight. Fairlight is the more upper level audio editor. If you're back over here in the edit tab, there are a bunch of audio things that we'll be going through today. But Fairlight is where you do your audio mix. You finish everything off uh, in, a, in a much more professional sense. This is more akin to Adobe Audition if we are going on the Adobe suite still. Uh, and there are a lot of great tools in this. It's very powerful. Again, this is a beginner editor tutorial, so we won't spend much time, if any, in Fairlight today. But no, if you do want to dive in further to audio editing in DaVinci Resolve, Fairlight is the place to be. Finally, we have Deliver here. 
Very self-explanatory. This is where you deliver your project. So once you've finished your edit, once you've put all of your graphics on it, you've color graded it, you've, you've finalized your sound mix, this is where you go through and you deliver your footage. Over on the left-hand side here, you'll have a bunch of different presets and different settings that you can change. We'll get into that at the end of the tutorial when we're finished with our edit and we export it out to our very happy clients. So that is, in a nutshell, the uh, seven different programs within DaVinci Resolve uh, and roughly what they do. So now that we know where everything is, let's go back to the media tab and we'll start this beginner tutorial for editors in DaVinci Resolve. Like I said, if you've never edited a video before in DaVinci Resolve or any other program, stick with me here and by the end of this video, I'll have you ready to go with all the tips and tricks that you need to get started. And speaking of get started, that's what we're gonna do right now. Okay, so up on the top left here, you've got media storage. Now, this is pretty self-explanatory. On the left-hand side here, you've basically got, uh, you know, equivalent to a Finder or an Explorer window, uh, Mac or PC. Uh, you can scroll these down and then find where your footage is. Or if you know where all of your footage is, you can just open up a Finder window here and drag one piece in and we'll automatically find it all. So just drag this first one in here. You can see that it's twirled down all of our folders here and we've got our folder full of rushes here. Now, all of this footage is still just on our computer. It's not in DaVinci Resolve yet. So if I just click on one of these, hit Command A to highlight it all. I wanna bring it all into my project. I can just click and drag down into the media pool here. Now, it's gonna ask me about changing some frame rates here. And this is because we haven't yet set up our project settings. So this is a great time to do that. Right now, we're gonna hit don't change. But before we do anything more, we're gonna go down into the right-hand corner of DaVinci Resolve and hit the little cog wheel and that will bring up our settings. So you can see here we've got our timeline format. Timeline resolution is set to 1920 by 1080. That's fine, that's what I wanna use for this project. But our timeline frame rate is set to 24 frames per second. Now I shot this footage, I know it's at 25 frames per second and I wanna deliver at 25 frames per second. So I'm going to switch this over to 25. You can switch it to whatever you need to switch it to uh, depending on what footage you're working with. Make sure that your playback frame rate is the same as your timeline frame rate. Now by default, Pretty much everything else in DaVinci Resolve is set up the way you would need it to be set up to get started. Once you're a little bit further along in your editor's journey, uh, there'll be a bunch of different settings in here that you can go through and toggle on and off. You can change uh, to your heart's content, depending on the project that you're working on, the files that you're working with. Uh, but for now, that's the main thing that I wanna change. I wanna make sure my timeline resolution is set to 1920 by 1080, and I wanna make sure my frame rate is set to 25 frames per second. So we've done that right now, and I'm gonna hit save. Now it's going to say uh, change project frame rate. Yes, I want to I want to change it. That's why I've just changed it. Thank you, DaVinci, for reminding me. But change. So now that we've done that, we're we're back to organizing our footage here. So this is all the footage that I've got from the shoot I did for Ride a Bike in Melbourne. Uh, I've got a an interview here uh, with Nello. I've got a couple of motion portraits, and you can just hover your mouse over here and get a little bit of a preview. Uh, and then I've got a bunch of B-roll footage that I'll use throughout the edit of Nello working on his bikes in the bike workshop. But I wanna add a few pieces of stock footage here as well, just to kind of round out the cycling vibe. Uh, and I'm going to get them from Envato Elements, as I mentioned in the intro to this video. Now we'll be working with a bunch of Envato Elements assets throughout this project. We've got some motion templates as well. So uh, I'll show you a little later on, but we've created a little intro to this video using a video template specifically for DaVinci Resolve from Envato Elements. So I can do exactly what I did before. Uh, I can open up my finder window and drag one piece of footage in and we'll find the rest. Or because I now know where everything is, I can twirl down this one here and I can go to my stock footage bin. I'll just highlight these, drag it into my uh, media pool down here and it's all good to go. So I've also got the intro and title that I mentioned before. So I'm going to drag this one in as well. And I've got some music as well. Uh, I think I'm going to use this one from memory. So I'm just gonna drag all three of those in and we'll play with them later on. So I can twirl this back up now. If I click down here in my media pool, if I just hit Command A to highlight everything, right click, I can go to create new timeline using selected clips. I'm going to hit that and it's gonna ask a few different things here. First of all, it's gonna ask me to name the timeline. So I'm going to call it ride a bike and I'm gonna call it V01 underscore 01. Now, as a new editor, um, <laughs> one thing that I will definitely try to impart on you is cleanliness and tidiness in your editing. I, I taught myself how to edit from a young age. Uh, I never had anyone to teach me how to edit and therefore I picked up some bad habits along the way with having messy timelines. And it wasn't until I actually entered the workforce as an editor 
and I had to work with other editors on the same projects within an agency environment. It wasn't until then that I realized how messy my projects were because I would get feedback from other editors that it was sometimes taking them a, a half day or so to jump into one of my edits and kind of work out where everything is. So it's very important to get into a habit from day one. If this is your first day editing, get into the habit from today to create a relatively tidy project. You've got to know where everything is to make your workflow fast, but if you ever have to hand this project off to another editor, or maybe you put this away for five years, uh, the client wants a change to it, you know, many years down the line and you have to jump back into it. You want to know where everything is. You don't want to be guessing. So creating a uh, clean and tidy timeline uh, and an edit in general is, you know, of key importance, something that you should definitely pick up and run with as a new editor. Now, naming conventions also go into that. So I'm calling this V01 underscore 01. And for me, that means this is the first version that I'm working on and then the first iteration that I'm working on. So tomorrow, if I come back to this, I will duplicate this project and call this V01 underscore 02 because it's still the first version I'm working on, but then it would be the second iteration. Now, if I send this off to the client, if I send V0101 off to the client and they provide feedback, and then I'm working on the new version of the edit with their feedback, I'd call it V0201 because it would be the second version and then the first iteration of the second version. So naming conventions don't have to be exactly like this, but they should be one form or another, something like this so that you don't end up with, you know, version underscore one, underscore final, underscore one, underscore next. You know, you want things to be nice and neat and controlled. Uh, again, I was a messy editor when I was younger. Don't be like me, be like adult me. <laughs> now, the other thing you can do here is use project settings. Uh, we checked our project settings before when I went down to the cogwheel, but this is where you can also change things like timeline resolution and timeline frame rate. But because I checked them all before, I know that they're right. So I'm gonna hit use project settings and hit create. Now you can see here, it has created a new timeline down here, right a bike V0101. If I double click it on here, it's going to open up in the edit tab. All right, so this is the edit tab right here. I'm gonna zoom out on the timeline just to show you what it looks like. But what has happened is all of our footage has been brought in here. Uh, you can see this long piece here is our interview. Uh, and then you can see through here, we've got our motion portraits. This is all of our B-roll. You can see it's all come from the same camera because I've got all of these different audio channels here. At the start, you'll have that stock footage that I bought in. Yep, a bit of cycling footage from Envato Elements. And then at the end here, you'll have our music, which sounds awful as I scrub through it. Uh, and a bit more stock footage as well. So first things first, I'm gonna do, it sounds a little bit counterintuitive, but this is the way I like to work. This is not everyone's way of working, but I think this is a really good way to get started as a beginner. So uh, for the time being, do as I do, but then as you kind of grow and learn along the way, you can start to kind of carve out the way that you like to do things. So it might seem counterintuitive, but I'm gonna click in the timeline here, I'm gonna hit Command A and I'm gonna hit Delete. Get rid of it all. So I wanna start fresh. I wanna control where I'm bringing things in. I think there is definitely a process that you should take in uh, actually creating and crafting your edit. So let's first run through a few different things that you're going to see on this page. Up the top left, you've got media pool. Now that's exactly the same as in our media pool over here. It's just more accessible in our edit tab. So if I click media pool, that opens that up there. I can just grab any of these pieces of footage and drag them onto the timeline there. And there we go, that's in our timeline, nice and easy. Uh, I'm gonna close that down for a second. You've also got effects. So through here, you will have a bunch of different effects that you can use, video transitions, audio transitions, titles, um, some static titles here, and here we've got some uh, animated titles from Fusion. Remember, Fusion is our VFX and compositor. You've got uh, generators down here, so this is like color bars uh, and grayscales and things like that. Probably not necessary to know as a new editor. As you go further with your journey and you, and you may start editing for uh, TV programs or TV broadcast, this is where those things will come in handy. Um, now, there are gonna be some things in here that are in the studio version only, not the free version. Uh, so forgive me, I'm not going to use many of them at all, uh, but there may be some things that you're seeing in these menus that you won't see in yours if you're just using the free version. Uh, and then you've got audio effects as well. Uh, you can use these in Fairlight or you can use these on the edit timeline. So I'm gonna drop effects away from here at the moment. Uh, you've got edit index and sound library. We won't really touch those today. DaVinci does actually have a, a sound library built in where you can download that uh, from the DaVinci Resolve website and you can search things like, um, I think, glass break. Let's see if that works. There you go. It's got sound effects and things like that, which are royalty free. But you should jump on that and read the T's and C's and work out if you can actually use that in your projects. But uh, that is something that is built in to DaVinci Resolve. We're not gonna use it today though. 
because we'll of course get all of our sound effects from Envato Elements. Uh, you can go through here to Mixer, so this turns the mixer, the audio mixer on and off and you'll start seeing that come into play more once we have some audio on the timeline. I'll close that down for now, just to have a little bit more space. You've got metadata up here, again nothing to inspect because we don't have anything selected, but if I select a clip over here, you'll have your start time code and time code, uh, the amount of frames, uh, bit depth, some bits and pieces that will be handy for you as you're going through, like it was shot 25 frames per second, 1920 by 1080, but if I scroll up and go to the interview, you'll see here that's shot 3840 by 2160. Shot that in 4K so that I can punch in on that. Now, if that doesn't make sense because you're a brand new editor and this is a beginner tutorial, so that's okay, uh, I'll explain what that means uh, in a moment. Dropping down the metadata, you've got inspector up here. Again, nothing to inspect. If I pull something down onto the timeline here and I click on this, now we've got a few other things that you can do. Now in, uh, in video, you've got room here to zoom in and out. You can reposition things on the uh, canvas here. You've got uh, rotation, uh, different fun things like this. I don't know if you're ever gonna use that, that looks super fun. Um, you've got cropping, if you double click on this, you can crop the sides, crop the tops. Um, there's a whole bunch of things in here that are really handy to use as you're going through your edit. We'll probably play with that a little bit as we go on. Uh, you've got some audio stuff here as well, just to do some quick tweaks to audio to make sure that everything is balanced. For now, I'm just gonna reset all of this and uh, bring this out of my project. So I've got a nice clean timeline to start with. Now quickly, the tools in the middle here, you've got your select tool, which I've got on now. You can change that with the keyboard shortcut A. You've got your trim edit mode, T. You've got your dynamic trim mode, W. You've got your blade mode, B. Now, again, there are a lot of great tools in DaVinci Resolve but this is a beginner editor tutorial and I wanna show you the ropes. I wanna show you the fundamentals of editing. So we're not gonna go through too many uh, handy shortcuts. We're not gonna go through too many of the actual editing tools. We're going to stick to the basics. We're gonna to stick to the A, which is the selection mode tool here. And we're gonna to stick to the B, which is the blade tool. Blade tool, cuts your footage, selection tool, selects the footage and you'll see what I mean in a moment. Moving across here, you've got snapping. Uh, so that means that uh, the timeline will be a little bit magnetic. So things will snap to the playhead. Uh, and and then over here you've got link selection. So uh, that's if you've got audio and video that are linked together, you can uh, uncheck that or recheck that. Uh, and then you've got some um, timeline view options here where you can zoom your timeline in and out. You can also do that with command minus and command plus. Over on this side here, you've got some timeline view options. So I'll just bring a piece of footage in here uh, that's got audio so you can see what I mean. You can click on the timeline view options uh, and you can see here, it'll give you different options. So at the moment we've got our audio waveforms off and we've got our video collapsed. If you click here, this will show you a video preview, but I've got to give the track a little bit of height and I'll give the audio track a little bit of height as well. We can turn the audio waveforms on with this button up here uh, and we can give it more height if we want. We've got different audio options here as well. Um, I like to have the audio waveforms on when editing uh, for the most part, because you can see at a glance where there's going to be gaps. So for here, we know that there's probably a gap here where it's just umming and ahhing or I'm talking in the background as the interviewer, and you know you're just gonna cut that out. So it's really handy to see uh, the audio waveforms. Clicking on here again, uh, I can click this button here, and this will give you more of a video preview throughout. It makes a little bit more sense when you see something like this, we'll put it in. If I zoom in here and start to scroll across, you can see we've got the uh, cyclist relatively close in frame, uh, then he drops a little bit further away from frame. We can kind of scroll through to work out when he's in the air. There we go, you can see he's in the air there. So at a glance, it's handy to be able to see that kind of stuff. So that is basically setting up our timeline and now we're ready to start editing. So what's the process for editing? Well, for a project like this, where you've got uh, a master interview and then you've got B-roll of that subject, plus you've got stock footage, and then you'll have stock music and some graphics elements. I like to treat it like this. First of all, you bring in your entire interview. You do selection cuts, find the best takes, find the best bits, and start to craft the story. Get rid of all of the filler, all of the things like the interviewer talking, uh, all of the things like the interviewee just talking between takes, you know, touching their face, uh, you know, thinking about what they're going to say. Cut out for the most part all of the ums and ahs and the stumbles, uh, and then just start to kind of move things around on the timeline to create a story. The story doesn't have to be linear. It doesn't have to be presented the way that uh, the interview took place. You can take the end of the interview and put it at the start. You can take the start of the interview and put it at the middle. That's where the storytelling element comes in to editing. And that's where the term non-linear editing comes from. So once you've got your selects made and you've got your story 
relatively crafted, then you would start bringing your B-roll in. And your B-roll serves to authenticate the story uh, and to add a little bit more flavor to it. And you can also use your B-roll to hide cuts. So if you've got a, a hard cut in your interview where it's very obvious that a cut has been made, but you're trying to make that point feel succinct, then you can put a bit of B-roll over the top of that. And obviously B-roll and other things like stock footage is there to just highlight points and really accentuate the, the story that you're trying to tell. Then you've got things like graphics. So that's titles like uh, lower thirds, name burns, uh, the title of the film, uh, anything like that. And then you've also got titles packages like intros and things like that. So, and then uh, music and audio is, is kind of like the finishing touch. Put a bit of a music bed underneath. And that's really editing 101. Cut your interview, create a story, add your B-roll, add your graphics, add your music, and you're kind of, you know, 90% of the way there. So I've been talking for a long time and you're probably thinking, Tom, shut up and edit. Let's do it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to bring our interview in here. Now I'm gonna zoom out a little bit uh, so we can start seeing some things. I'm just going to collapse my uh, audio height here for the moment. And what I actually will do is I'll open the audio height up a little bit more and I can see here that this is our main talent microphone. And I can tell that just by looking at the waveforms, they're a lot bigger, they're a lot clearer. I know that that is our talent audio, but I can double check this by using the solo and mute buttons on the audio track here. So if I solo our audio here. Three weeks ago when we opened Bar Joe. And if I then solo this. Literally three weeks ago when we opened. It's very clear which one is our hero audio. So I'm gonna, Highlight all of these tracks as I've done now. I'm going to hit the unlink tool up here. So now if I click out of that and click in again, you can see that I've just selected the video so I can move that around and that's gonna pull it out of sync, hitting Command Z to undo that. But what it does mean is I can select all the audio tracks that I don't need, like these two at the bottom, which the camera added in, because the camera had four channels of audio, uh, as well as my scratch track, which is basically just me as the interviewer asking questions. And I can just delete those. But now I wanna make sure these two are together. So I'm gonna highlight everything on here again, and I could have done that with Command A as well, and relink this with this button here, or I can right click and go link clips. So they are now linked again, and I'm just gonna drag the audio up here so we can see as much of our audio as possible, but still see everything on the one timeline here. Now, like I said before, the reason why we use the audio waveforms here, it's very obvious when I'm asking a question and when Nello is answering a question here, you can see that this section here is probably gonna be one answer to a question. This section here is gonna be one answer to a question and so on and so forth. So now I'm ready to do my selects. I'm selecting the best parts of the take. And like I said earlier, I'm going to be using just the basic tools, only the basic tools that you need to know to get started as an editor. That's the select tool and the blade tool. And these tools can be found in any editing software. Now, if I just zoom in on this section here and I can see using the audio waveforms that this part of the clip is probably just me in the background asking a question, which is correct. Uh, and then this part will be Nello answering that. So I know that I don't need any of this section and that it's probably just gonna start from around here. So I'm just gonna hit B on my keyboard and make a cut here. And that's now cut the clip in two. Now, if I hit A, I can just click on here and you can see that these two are separate clips now. So what I can also do then is hit B over here as well, cut this section out, hit A on my keyboard, select this part and hit delete. And now that's gone because I know I'm not gonna use that at all. So that's kind of half the process of making the select. What you could also do is once you've got this part, you know that he's going to start answering in here and let's just play through this for a second. Yeah. Before you even started this or? Uh, yeah. Now you can see that I continued to ask a question whilst I thought he was going to start answering. And you can see he's rubbing his head here, which we don't want. So now I can just hover my mouse over the start of this clip here. And you can see it's giving me two different options. I can either grab this piece of the clip and start dragging this clip backwards until I've found the point where I want it to start. Let's say for instance, that's there. Way before, yeah, yeah. If or, and I've just undone that now, Command Z, or instead of dragging the clip from there, I can then select the cut point and I can drag the cut point around. So if I go down to here and go, yes, we want him to start from where he's pointing. And now we can go to that next part. Four or five years ago. And that's another way that we can make an edit or a cut. And again, that's just uh, some basic tools that you can use on the timeline using your mouse. And these are the options that come up. Or you can really just go through and make cuts and delete where you want. That's using the B tool. If I hit A, delete that, delete that, delete that, and so on and so forth. 
So I'm going to undo all of that now and I'm going to go through and I'll fast forward this on YouTube, but basically you'll see me uh, in a very time-lapse way, go through and make all of my selects for this interview. And I'll be using a combination of the blade tool, uh, the select tool, and I'll be dragging different parts of the clip in and out. What I'm looking for is gaps in the audio waveform here. So you can see where I'm asking a question and Nello is answering the question. And I'll be cutting out things like ums and ahs or where he's rubbing his head or talking to the camera. And as I'm doing this, I'm thinking about how we're going to craft the story. You'll also see as well with my process, I like to do something like this, where let's say that this part of my footage is the section that I want, a select that I've made. Once I've done that, I can hit A on my keyboard and drag it up. So if I do that a couple of times, Let's say for instance, that also is a piece if I drag that up. Once I get to the end of my clip, I can go all the way through and I can see, all right, all of the selects are at the top there. So I can then just delete all of the ones at the bottom and I'm left with just my selects. But what it does is through the process, I'm not deleting all of the uh, extra bits of footage because I might get down to here and realize that something that I've cut out earlier on is actually something that I want to use. But instead of then having dragged that back into the timeline and find that part again, I can just go back through to my cut points and, and finesse those before I uh, delete everything. So let's uh, let's go through. I'm going to make my selects. We'll, uh, we'll hit the time lapse. We'll pop some music over it. And you'll see in a pretty fast roundabout way how long it takes me to edit down this 30 minute interview piece. I'll, uh, I'll set a little timer and I'll let you know how long it takes me once I come back from the time lapse. All right, there we go. So that's relatively straightforward. I've, I've picked out a few selects for this one. I haven't gone too uh, too crazy for this just so that we can get through the tutorial. So I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna delete everything that uh, didn't make the cut delete. So now we can just go down and zoom in a little bit here. And to get it all together into one piece, you can just click between them. And this highlights something called a ripple, which is just the kind of empty space in between two clips. If you highlight that and hit delete, uh, it's just gonna close these gaps. So we'll go through and we'll close these gaps here. There you go. Uh, and if you close the first gap, it takes everything back to the start. I'm gonna highlight all of this and just drag it back down again so that they're next to each other and gonna zoom in. So now these are just random different bits of footage from throughout the interview um, that don't really tell much of a story yet. So we're gonna have to go through and kind of place them in the right order. I've got a pretty good idea of how I want things to be here. I shot a little motion portrait, which is uh, Nello just standing and walking into spot, coming into focus. Underneath that, I want to have him saying, I'm Nello, this is Ride a Bike Bicycle Workshop. So we got that piece of uh, footage in our selects. Uh, I then want it to go into our uh, intro piece, uh, which we've created yesterday, and I'll bring that up shortly. Then I'll go into a little bit about the, uh, the workshop, which is the other parts of the interview here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to scroll through, and you can use the up and down arrows to go in between your cuts here. So I'm just going to hit spacebar just to hear things through. Well, this is my little business. And I quite like that piece, but I'm gonna use that coming out of our intro. So I'm gonna just jump through and see if I can find the Hi, I'm Nello. Uh, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike Bicycle Workshop. Cool, so that's the part that I want. So I'm just gonna highlight everything here. I'm gonna click and I'm just gonna drag to make myself a little bit of room at the start. I'm gonna select the piece of footage that I've just identified and bring that down to the start. So I'm Nello and this is my business. I'm Nello. So I kind of want him to say hi, uh, which he doesn't say in this piece here. So I'm just gonna zoom in here. So I'm just gonna copy and paste this bit of footage out here. So I've just duplicated that piece of footage because I, although, although that is a good take, uh, I know he did a few takes within that because I've just gone through with all of my selects there. I'm Nello and this is my business. That was the last take that he did of that. Usually you can bet the last take is generally the best take, but it always pays to go through and make sure that you're not missing something. And in this case, I think I'm missing something. I think I want uh, a different version, which I think is somewhere around here. Also, hi, I'm Nello and this is my business, Ride a Bike Bicycle Workshop. That's the take that I'm after. So I'm just going to uh, drag this down here to the start of that. Drag this down here to the start of that there and delete this piece from the start. Bring that over. So now 
Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike Bicycle Workshop. Perfect. But I don't want the footage of him. I want this motion portrait. So I can now watch through, there's a couple of takes within this. You can see he uh, walks up and smiles a few times, walks into focus. I like the ones where he smiles versus being uh, too serious. And I'm just trying to find one where he doesn't look down immediately. I think that one's gonna work well. So as I'm scrubbing through in here, I can just hit I and O on my keyboard to set an in and out point. So I'm hitting I about here and O just before he looks down. There we go. Now I can just click and drag this piece of footage and you'll see it drags all of our audio files in here, but we don't want the audio files for this. So I'm just going to click here where it just shows the video. You can also do this just for audio, but I'm just pulling the video. I'm gonna pull that down and sit it on top here of him saying who he is. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike Bicycle Workshop. Now that's good, but it's probably a little bit too much at the head here where it's blurry. So I'm just gonna pull this back and I'm gonna bring the back edge in. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike Bicycle Workshop. Great, I think that looks pretty good. Now the next thing I wanna bring in is this intro that I've already made. And we brought that into the media pool earlier, so I'm just going to scroll down and find that intro. So I'm just gonna click the intro here and drag that in. Now this doesn't have audio on it. If it did, that would be great. <laughs> uh, but we're gonna use music under this later on. Because it's got no audio on it, I can either leave that audio there or I can unlink it. Right click here and hit link clips or use the little button up here. I'm gonna just hit that and delete. So now, play that through. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike Bicycle Workshop. So I actually think I want the intro to come in. Bike Bicycle Workshop. Just as he finishes saying that. So I'm going to pull this back a little bit there. There we go. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike Bicycle Workshop. Great, and now we go through this, so Ride a Bike. Uh, I've got some of the B-roll here that we'll be seeing later on. Now I made this using a DaVinci Resolve template from Envato Elements. In the description below, there'll be a link to an Elements collection where you can not only find this project, but you can also find all the stock footage and music that I'm working with right now and the fonts as well. Uh, so make sure to check out that below and check out Envato Elements today. So now that I'm getting a feel for this, I kind of want to get some music in. That could be a little bit putting the cart before the horse, but you want to start to get a bit of a feeling here. So Let's bring this uh, kind of track in that I want to use. We'll bring the 30 second version in first. We'll just click and drag and pull that down here. Now I actually am just going to go to my timeline view options here and shrink my audio tracks a little bit and my video just so I can see a little bit more. When I play this through, the audio is going to be quite loud on the video here and I'll show you how to turn that down in a moment. Hello. Too loud, way overpowered. So if we go up to mixer up here to bring this open, you can see here as we play it, and I'll stop talking because you won't be able to hear me over it. As we play it, it'll be very high. Straight into the red. We don't want that at all. So we can either grab on audio two over here and pull this down. Or, because that will do that for the entire audio track, or if we want to do it just for this clip, we can reset that. And we can just hover our mouse over here. There's a line that goes through this. We can just grab this and that is changing our volume there. So. We can bring it down to around negative six and we'll see how that feels. Still huge. So we can just drag it down even more. Around negative 16, I tend to find works well for background music. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike. Bye. So I actually think there should be no music playing whilst he introduces himself and I want the music to kick in as that intro kicks in. So I'm just gonna zoom in a little bit here and I'm going to just click and drag this so it kind of hits right when Hi, we want it to. And this is my business, Ride a Bike Bicycle Workshop. And you can see it kind of ramps up a little bit just before it. Now it can be a bit louder actually because there's no audio playing underneath. So we'll just click into here and we'll grab this and bring this up a little bit. A bit too much, pull it back down. And it's all about finesse here. Now, that's all good and well. We kind of want it to taper off now at the end. 
And again, this is a little bit putting the cart before the horse, but sometimes this is where your edit takes you. You just kind of got to go with the flow a little bit. So we can see here on this beat, on that beat right there, and I'll zoom in, we can make a cut. I'm going to turn snapping off so I can get a bit more granular on this. I'm going to cut right on the cut here. And then I also will go down to where it fades out. That's going to be the cut right there. Zoom in and I'll make that cut. Now, if I delete this section here and bring this in, I'll turn snapping back on. That's a nice little fade out, but what do we do there? Obviously we've got a few seconds where we're gonna come back to the interview and it's still gonna be a bit too loud. So let's leave that for now. I'm just gonna hit mute and we can work on the next part of it and we can come back and finesse that. It's all about telling a story. So I'm using my up and down arrow keys here, down to move further right along the timeline to find a part where, I think it's this part where he says, this is my workshop. Well, this is my little business. And I think that's gonna work nice with that bit of audio that we've just used there. So I'm just gonna click and drag this back. Zoom back in. Well, well, this is my little business. And it's kind of nice how he looks at the camera there, even though it kind of breaks the fourth wall. And, you know, maybe that wasn't a stylistic choice. In the interview, I actually asked him to look at me, uh, which was across from camera and not directly at camera, but he kind of breaks it here. And, you know, he's a charming person, so it kind of works well on the edit. He's very proud of his business. So this may be considered an outtake to some, but I actually quite like it. So I'm gonna leave it in. So if I undo the mute track here, uh, so we can hear the audio again, let's see if this works. Well, this is my little business. Now I think that works, but it's still a little bit hot as we come back in. So we actually just want this to fade out a bit. So if I just click down here, that's going to open up our keyframes. Now I'm just gonna drag this piece of audio closed so that we can see what we're working with down here. Uh, and I'll just drag in the middle between our audio and video, I can drag the video channel up. So we've got a little bit more room to work with. Now what this means, and if you're not familiar with the uh, idea of keyframing, Basically, you can set two different points along your timeline on different pieces of footage. So you can set your uh, keyframe to be 100% in one position and then 0% in another position. And over that period of time, it will ramp down from, uh, from 100 to zero. What we wanna do here is find when we want it to start fading out, so around here, and we'll add a keyframe, hit this little button here. You can see it's adding a keyframe there, adding a keyframe there. Uh, and we've got this set to volume keyframe here. If I click down here, it's, you've got different effects added to this music track here. You'd have different options. And now I can go forward to the part where I want it to quiet down. And I can open this up just to see where he says it there. So I want it to have quietened down by the time he gets there so we can hear as well. Adding another keyframe. I can just drag the volume down here. And you can see that's creating like a little envelope there and quietening that down, almost creating a fade out. Well, now obviously it comes back in hot here. We can fix that in a minute. I think this goes down a little bit too low, so I'm gonna bring it back down to negative 18. Well, and I'll just make this one match. So I'll pull this back down to negative 18 as well, just manually. Well, this is my little business. Now I think that works well, but we're tapering off very quickly. And what I want to do is add a little bit of a curve to that keyframe. So what I can do here is I can click on these keyframes here and highlight, and then I can add a curve here. At the moment, they're just straight. If I add a little curve uh, out, and it's adding a little dip down. Well. And I think it also should happen uh, basically exactly as the clip cuts. So let's cut it right here. Well. And it's still feeling like it's going a little bit low. So we're gonna bring that back up to negative 16 as well as this. Well, this is my little business. I think that works well. Now, again, we could spend uh, the next four hours finessing this, but we've got to move on. We've got to get you uh, well on your way to becoming an editor.
you're already part way there. We're editing this. Let's let's take stock of where we're at. We've uh, created uh, a nice little intro here with a motion portrait and a bit of voiceover underlay. We're going into our pre-designed intro piece. We've got some stock music here and then we're moving into our actual interview. So let's uh, play back and take stock. Hi, I'm Nello and this is my business, Ride a Bike Bicycle Workshop. <laughs> This is my little business. So there we go. That's a nice way to start. So I'm gonna just uh, move on to continuing to craft the story here. So we'll go through and we'll just play through some of our clips here and we'll start to craft a little edit here. I'm not gonna go through this in too much detail because we just wanna show you the fundamentals. We don't wanna get too bogged down in this tutorial without actually crafting a story. We just wanna give you the tools to then go out and do it yourself. So I think there's some nice stuff there. We'll just drag that in. That's a full select, but I think there's going to be parts in it that we'll actually edit out. So, so I don't like that bit where he stutters. I'm gonna make a cut there, deleting this part, closing the gap. And I've done that a little bit too harsh there. So I'm gonna Command Z, I'm gonna zoom in, and I'm just going to uncheck the snapping tool here and just drag this out a little bit more. So there, we want to make sure we get that, that in there. Okay, so that's a nice little part there. I don't know if it makes sense coming straight out of my little business. This is my little business, so we'll just move on. You can also use some uh, tools to speed up your workflow here, and I do this very often. So on your keyboard, J, K, and L will act as like play, uh, fast forward, and reverse. So uh, L, fast forward, K, play, pause, J, reverse. I like to kind of edit in double time uh, because, you know, if you're editing a half an hour piece here and you're having to play back that in real time the, uh, the entire way through your edit, it can really easily bog down your time. So if I hit uh, L here twice. Okay, so there's some really good stuff in there and I think that will transition really well out of our intro. So I'm just going to grab that piece there. Uh, just using command and my scroll wheel here to move left and right on the timeline. I want to bring it into this section. Let's just check this is the right piece. So at ride a bike. Yep, so at ride a bike. So I'll bring it over here. So now at the moment, we've got... This is my little business. This is my little business. And then we want him to talk about the business. This is my little business. So at ride a bike, we restore bicycles. We service bicycles. We repair bicycles. But the, the core of the business is to reuse and upcycle already existing parts. And I'm going to cut there because he starts to ramble a little bit. So I think we go from this part here. So what we want to do. To reuse and upcycle already existing parts. So what we want to do here is give bicycles as much love as possible and bring them back to their, their former glory so people can love them and enjoy them again. So that's a nice bit there. Now, there is obviously a bit of a jump cut here. I call already existing parts. So what we wanna do- And it's a bit distracting. So what we can do is we can click on this piece of footage here and we can go up to our inspector as we saw earlier and we'll go over to the video part here and we can create a zoom in. So what we wanna do is just punch in on this a little bit. And now I said before, you might not understand what I mean by punch in uh, if you're a brand new editor. Now we're editing on a 1920 by 1080 timeline, full HD. Whereas this interview, I captured at 3840 by 2160, ultra HD, 4K. Now the reason why I did that is not because I want to deliver at 4K, it's because I want to have room in the resolution to be able to crop in on my footage without losing any quality on a 1080p timeline. So if I go to 1.5 here, that's basically our limit. Now, obviously this looks a bit janky. Already existing parts. So what we want to, but you're starting to see the uh, the process here. If I use the position here to move my position down, kind of the rule of thumb that you want to uh, take with this is to make the eyes match up. If the eyes don't match up, the audience can kind of get a little bit confused sometimes when you have a lot of rapid quick cuts as to you know what they're looking at and what's happening in that cut. So the principle behind this is, is really make sure that the eyes match up when you punch in. Ready existing parts. So what we want, 
multiple already existing parts. So what you can see here, I've got him framed on the right hand third. So if you look at the rule of thirds here, you've got your left third, your right third, top third, bottom third. His eye line is basically on the cross between the right third and the top third. And if I then cut in here, you can see his nose there is basically on that line. And then his right hand eye is, you know, just a little bit further to that line. So I'll move that over just a little bit and just down a touch but I think that will feel pretty natural. We use and upcycle already existing parts. So what we want to... I actually think it can move over a little bit further because we are quite on the thirds here. We kind of still want to stay on the thirds here as well. It'll feel a bit more natural. And upcycle already existing parts. So what we want to... And now to show you what I mean by the thirds here, if I really go to the opposite side dramatically, you'll understand what I mean. Let's pull it all the way to that side. Already existing parts. So what we want to do, it just makes no sense. It feels really jarring when you watch it through. An upcycle already existing parts. So what we, so we won't do that at all. We'll go back to here. Upcycle already existing parts. So what we want to do here. Is and there we go. That's a nice punch in or crop in cut. So let's continue with the edit. There is give bicycles as much love as possible and bring them back to their, their former glory so people can love, love them and enjoy them again. And let's see what this piece is doing next to it. Seeing something that was, was literally dead, rusted away, that somebody else form a glory so people can love them and enjoy them again. Seeing something that- And now you can see that punch in that we did punches back out to the original footage and we've already kind of cleaned up our cut there. Was literally dead, rusted away, that somebody else has already considered that there is no more life left. Now, what I don't like about this part is obviously the jump cut, which we'll have to cover again because it's not very nice. You can get away sometimes with a straight up jump cut. I do it all the time for the uh, Tuts Plus YouTube channel videos here, but that's kind of part of the YouTube language. Whereas this is more of documentary style where you don't want to have those jump cuts uh, out on display. So what you can do is cover it with B-roll. So let's think about what he's talking about right now. Dead, rusted away, that somebody else has already considered He's talking about a rusted piece of the bike here that someone may not appreciate, whereas he takes it and, you know, and, and works on it and brings it back to its former glories. Let's go through our footage here and see what we can find that would kind of make sense to cover that bit of a cut. So maybe something with him working on it. I'll double click on this and we can see here. So that's good, but you can't really see him doing much. Maybe this one here, there we go. We've got his hands working on this old cog. Now don't worry about this uh, little bit of pixelation that you're seeing here. You might see this from time to time in your edits. This is just part of the encoding that goes into playing back this footage in real time, depending on what the file formats are that you've uh, shot with and what you're editing in. You'll get a little bit of this from time to time, but rest assured on the export, following my export settings later on, that will all disappear. All right, so let's uh, set it in that point. I think here's good. You always wanna cut on the action and let's drag that down on top of this clip here. We'll just zoom in dead, rusted away, that somebody else has already... And that looks good, but it's a bit too quick. Rusted away, that somebody else... Let's add a few more bits and pieces in there. This one of him looking at it makes sense because obviously we want to see his hands there and then we want to like cut to something else that he's doing. Away, that somebody else has already... And then I think one more piece of footage there and we'll hear what he's saying. Considered that there is no more life left. So we kind of want to find something that's, uh, you know, looks like it's being worked on. Maybe these handlebars will work well here. Just finding a good part of the footage here. At the start here, you can see there's a shadow. You can see he must have been walking around uh, in front of the light on set. I don't like that. Um, the bottom of the bars are cut off here. I think coming up from the table here from the workshop is nice. In point there, out point there, bit of motion. And we'll drag that in on top. Now my snapping is off, so I'm gonna put that back on just so I can snap these together. That somebody else has already considered that there is no more life left in this thing, this object. Well, it says that object is a bicycle there. So we wanna bring in just one more piece of footage here that really shows off what we're talking about. So let's find a nice bicycle piece. Uh, maybe this one. In and out points, dragging our footage over. That object is a bicycle. 
And I think we just need to bring that in a little bit closer as he's saying it. There is an element as a new editor of uh, kind of getting used to say and see, which is basically as someone says something, then you kind of want to show what they're talking about. So say and see is kind of a big thing in corporate video editing and, and documentary video editing as well. Um, and it, it does, it just makes sense to hear what someone's talking about. And if we're going to cut away to something, we're going to cut away to something that visually represents what they're talking about. So here we've got him saying, but that object is a bicycle. And to me, all bicycles have a life until they're literally broken in two pieces. They've still got a life. And so I'm pretty happy with that. Let's, uh, let's go through and see what we've got left in our clips here. Actually, technically, that Apollo was the first one ever four or five years ago. Yeah. Now, I know that I've got footage of the bike that he's talking about. He's talking about the first bike. Let's just go and bring this down here and we'll make some edits to this piece. Actually, technically... Now the bike that he's talking about is uh, this red Apollo here. In point there, out point there maybe. Drag it in, see how it feels. Two pieces, they've still got a life. So what I'm doing here is just creating a bit of a bridge cut between our B-roll here. They've still got a life. So now that we're seeing that Apollo, we're gonna hear him saying, yeah. actually tech, I'm gonna drag that little bit at the start so you don't hear his little um. Actually, technically, that Apollo. And then I'm going to cut this piece of Apollo footage. So we still get him pointing. They've still got a life. Actually, technically, that Apollo was the first one ever four or five years ago. And I'll close that gap. I also wanna add a little bit more of this Apollo footage. Not four that much. or five years ago. And it kind of just sat in my bedroom at four or five years ago. And it kind of just... And I'll get a little bit more if I can. This is not from the same bike, but uh, you know, this is where as editors, we get to, get to decide what we want to use or what we don't want to use. Four or five years ago. Four or five years ago. And it kind of just sat in my bedroom as a frame for literally two years. And that was the literally the, the little pebble rolling down the top of the, the mountain, which snowballed to, to what we've got today. Okay, so I'm pretty happy with that little edit here as an example of how to cut a video like this. But I wanna add some of the stock footage that we got from Envato Elements. So let's find some, you know, some appropriate places, other than this intro here, some appropriate places to pop this uh, throughout. So I'm just gonna play through from the start and we'll see where we're at, see how things are feeling. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike, Bicycle Workshop. Well, this is my little business. So at Ride a Bike, we restore bicycles. One thing I did notice as we're going through here, is that, uh, well, you've got this jump cut. Right my here. little business. So I ride a bike. Which doesn't really work. So I'm just going to make a little bit of a punch in cut here. We restore bicycles. I'm just going to put a blade here, select this piece of footage, make this a little bit punched in. This is my little business. So I ride a bike, we restore bicycles, we service bicycles, we repair bicycles, but the, the core of the business is to adding a little bit of footage just out of here. Some B-roll footage of him restoring the bike, I think would really tie this piece together nicely. Now I've got this nice piece of him uh, working at his bench. There's also a nice wide shot of him turning the light on. So let's use that. Pulling that over the top. So at Ride a Bike, we restore bicycles. We service bicycles. And I'll do a little bit of a punch in here with this other piece of footage. We repair bicycles, but the, the core of the business is to reuse and upcycle already existing parts. So what we want to do here is give bicycles as much love as possible. 
And where he's talking about giving bicycles love, you know, and, and for people to be able to ride them, I think this is a good spot to put in some of our B-roll of cycling. So we'll scroll up and, uh, and we'll just start picking some B-roll that we like. I've got this woman riding her bike here in an out point. Let's drag the footage on. Uh, this mountain biker here doing a bit of a jump. I think in and out point here would be cool. Let's see how this feels. Already existing parts. So what we want to do here is give bicycles as much love as possible and bring them back to their, their former glory. I think this is feeling nice. I, I add a little bit more. It's a nice sunset shot. so people can love them and enjoy them again. So we'll just drag this out so it covers right to the end of the cut. So this entire section now is gonna be B-roll. Now I think this part, their former glory, is probably a little bit too long. So let's add one more piece in there. This is a nice shot here. You've got a bit of a teal and orange background going on. Uh, and we'll just drag it in here. These two shots will complement nicely. All right, so let's play this section through. We use and upcycle already existing parts. So what we want to do here is give bicycles as much love as possible and bring them back to their, their former glory so people can love them and enjoy them again. Seeing something that was, was lit. I think that was working really nicely. What I want to do right now, I think we're almost done. We might put a little bit more music on this and obviously then we're going to do a color grade just to make sure everything is nice and tight. Uh, and we'll do a little bit of tweaking of the audio here as well. Let's just zoom out so we can see our entire timeline. And we'll just play it through and see where we're at. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike Bicycle Workshop. Well, this is my little business. So at Ride a Bike, we restore bicycles, we service bicycles, we repair bicycles, but the, the core of the business is to reuse and upcycle already existing parts. So what we want to do here is give bicycles as much love as possible and bring them back to their, their former glory so people can love them and enjoy them again. Seeing something that was, was literally dead, rusted away, that somebody else has already considered that there is no more life left in this thing, this object. But that object is a bicycle. And to me, all bicycles have a life until they're literally broken in two pieces, they've still got a life. Actually, technically, that Apollo was the first one ever four or five years ago. And it kind of just sat in my bedroom as a frame for literally two years. And that was the, literally the, the little pebble rolling down the top of the, the mountain, which snowballed to, to what we've got today. So I think that's all working really well. In terms of the story, I'm happy with it. And now I just want to put some finishing touches on things. And again, this is a beginner editing tutorial. I've used the most basic tools in a free piece of software here. And we've gone from a bunch of random footage, an interview that was a little bit rambly, <laughs> sorry Nello, uh, to something that feels concise, something that has uh, B-roll footage that we shot with Nalo, something that is using stock footage and video, but how can we just polish it to that next level so that we're ready to release it? One, I think it could use a bit more music underneath the interview part, even just a light music bed. Two, we'll just do some basic audio processing just to make sure all the levels are right, and then we'll do a quick color grade. And like I said earlier, you can jump into my uh, more extensive color grading tutorial on the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel that will take you through the process in much greater detail than what we'll do, but we'll just tweak everything a little bit just to make sure it's all nice and consistent. You know, at a beginner level. So first of all, let's bring some more music into this. So at Ride a Bike, we restore bicycles. So now I'm, uh, I'm happy with that. I've just gone and grabbed another quick track from Envato Elements. Uh, just did a little bit of a background lo-fi hip hop number. We've got this kind of rocky track at the start, which I think works well for this kind of topic, bicycle workshop, you know, working with your hands, you know, mountain biking, all that kind of stuff. Works well, but then you don't want to have that big kind of rocky tune behind your uh, vocals. Something that's a little bit more down tempo tends to work better in the background. So we'll just play it through. Restore bicycles. 
we service bicycles, we repair bicycles, but the, the core of the bit skips through a little bit. Being something that was, was literally dead. Mountain, which snowballed to, to what we've got today. And now we've got this little bit at the end, which we can open up our keyframes and we can bring the volume back up. We'll put a little bit of a title there, I think, to finish. Again, just adding some keyframes here and I'll add the other keyframe around about here. I'll bring this section up to around negative six and I'll add a little bit of a slope to it. And what I wanna do in this section, I think I might just have some footage of the bike workshop, uh, blurred out a little bit and we'll have a little bit of a title where you can learn a little bit more about ride a bike, maybe a logo. I like this little brake lever, gear lever. Let's uh, bring this in here and Add that to the end, trim it to the end of our music track here, and then we'll just do it to the end there and hit O just to bring our out point all the way to cover that. Which snowballed to, to what we've got today. I actually think our audio needs to come up a little bit closer. So let's do it around there. And we'll just make sure that this gap is closed here. Today. And what we want to do is add a little bit of a blur effect to this. So this is a great point in the tutorial to show you some little effects that you can add to just finish off your videos. So if you go up to effects here, I'm going to close the media pool because I think we're done with that now. If I go up to our effects here and I just go into search and look for something called a Gaussian blur, you can just grab this and you can drag it over the top. And that's just made it blurry. But how do you, uh, I guess, control the amount of blur? Well, now that that's happened, you can see that effects is up in our inspector and we can change some things in here. So this is with the Gaussian blur on and off, and we can do the horizontal strength, uh, we can do the vertical strength, and this is at the same time. We can uncheck that if we want to. So I think around about there is gonna be nice because we'll put a little title above this as well. Now, speaking of titles, the final little thing that we need to do before we get into the color grade is add our lower thirds, and that's to introduce Nello, who he is. Uh, and then we also need to do a little title at the end of this. We've used a font within the intro here uh, and we wanna make sure that is consistent throughout. So I'll make sure that I'm doing our titles in that. Up in our effects section here, we'll get rid of our uh, search for Gaussian blur that we did and we can go to titles, just do basic titles here or we can do fusion titles. And let's go with fusion titles because they're gonna be animated. So you can double click them to get a bit of an idea of what they're gonna look like and play through here. You can see your sample text, it comes in, it's uh, Nice and animated. Uh, let's have a look at this, digital glitch. That feels kind of in line with what we've got going up here. I'll play this back again. Got that kind of glitchy effect. So I'm gonna use this digital glitch, but got digital glitch lower third and that's going to put it in the right place for a lower third. Playing it through here. Great. So I'm just going to click that and drag it over and we could put it at the start where he uh, introduces his name. Hi, I'm Nello and this is my business, Ride a Bike, Bicycle Work. But I actually think it will get in the way. What I'm going to do is we'll zoom in and we're going to put the lower third uh, when he first comes on screen after the intro. Well, this is my little business. Now sometimes with these titles, you'll see it's going to start to slow down the computer a little bit. And now we're, we're, we're getting a few things happening at once here. So you just have to be patient with it. Editing's all about patience. To change this, I'm going to go up and just change sample text to ride a bike. And then I'm going to go up to, so that's our large text. And then on our small text, which is his name, I'm going to do hello. Now we wanna make sure it's the same font. So I know what the font is here. So I'm going to just select all, highlight, going to go into the font section here and go to I and go industries capital. Uh, and then I'm also going to do the same thing down on Nello here. Now this font I got from Envato Elements. Again, I'll have the link in the description below to my assets collection. So you can download all of these if you're an Element subscriber. And if you're not, get subscribed today. The link is in the description below. We want to make this a little bit bigger. So I'm going to make Nello's name slightly bigger. We can just drag the size up here and we can move the position as well. So I'm pretty happy with that there. Let's play it back through. Well, this is my little business. So at Ride a Bike, we... I'm happy with that. 
and I know that it's going to look better once it renders, so I'm being a bit patient with it right now. Okay, so we've done that, and then the very last thing we want to do is add a title over the top here. Uh, and let's go back to our Fusion titles and find something else. What's this Jitter one? That's kind of cool. We did have a bit of a glitch theme going, but with this kind of movement, I think that could work as well. So let's just drag this Jitter one over the top, and I want to pull it out a bit further so it goes the whole way across. And this will simply say, ride a bike. And again, we want to do it in our industry's capital. And we'll play this back through. And it does last a little bit long here. So let's put the music back on and see how it feels. Full to, to what we've got today. And I think on that last beat, I'm going to change this. Uh, to say Melbourne. So I'm going to drag this all the way back and then I'm going to click uh, hit command C and hit command V and paste that in and then I'm going to change this to Melbourne, Melbourne Oz. And we'll just make sure that ends right at the end of our clip there. And I do want this to fade off a little bit, this uh, title. So I'm just going to go up to our video transitions in our effects panel and grab the non-additive dissolve and put that onto our title here. And you'll see this will fade our title out. And I also want the uh, footage underneath to dip to color. So we'll dip to color and that means it just dips to black because black is what is underneath this piece of footage at the moment on the timeline. And we'll make that a little bit shorter on the title. There we go. And that is our edit done. I'm very happy with what we got done there. The last thing that we need to do is color grade it so all of this footage that's directly out of the camera, this stuff here, uh, actually looks good uh, and matches some of our other stuff that we've got going on, like our stock footage from Envato Elements. So the next thing we're gonna do, and I'm going to go through this very quickly because remember you can click the link up here or in the description below to watch our more in-depth color grading tutorial in DaVinci Resolve. Right now, we're going to do the fast version, which I touched on in that tutorial, but this is the fast version for beginner editors. So going to our color tab here and you'll see our timeline is represented in the middle here. So you've got all the different pieces of footage that show up in the timeline represented here. And for each one, we can color grade them. Now I'm going to turn my effects off up here because we don't need them. And knowing what footage and camera settings we used uh, on the day helps. And we can go through and select the right LUT for the right job. And a LUT, by the way, is a lookup table, which is a very technical way to say it's effectively an Instagram filter. It's basically just a pre-designed look that you can put over your footage that will get it to uh, a certain point. So if we go into the Sony LUTs here, I know this was shot on S-Log3, uh, and if we wanna move that to Rec 709, which is a color space that uh, most things are displayed in, again, <laughs> you can get very deep into this. This is a very top level overview. We can grab this LUT here and just mouse over the top of it, and you can see that's brought a lot of color into our footage, going from our washed out uh, log footage, logarithmic footage, to this with a bit of a LUT on it, and you can look at these ones as well. That one looks a bit more natural. I can just right click on this and apply LUT to current node, and there we go, that looks pretty good. So I'm actually going to take that approach, but I'm gonna tweak it a little bit further still. So these LUTs are built into DaVinci Resolve. When you download the program, the free version or the studio version, you'll have these built in. But right now I'm going to close that, so I've got a little bit more space to work with, and up here is our nodes. So that's the node that now has our LUT on it. If I create a new node here, add node corrector, and just drag this up to here, this is where I can start tweaking a few little things uh, because I want to make his skin color a little bit richer. So down here in our primaries color wheels, again, apologies for flying through this, but uh, you know we've got to we've got to get through this tutorial. This is a beginner's tutorial for editors, not colorists. So we're we're moving through quickly. This is the editor's toolkit. Uh, I'm going to use my primaries color wheels, which I can. Uh, manipulate the lift, gamma, and gain, which is basically our shadows, our midtones, and our highlights. And I can manipulate the color within those as well. So looking at my scopes, you can see at the bottom here is absolute black, at the top here is absolute white. I'm going to grab my lift, which is my shadows, and I'm gonna grab this jog wheel at the bottom and just play around with it and start to bring a little bit of contrast in. 
So looking at his shirt here, I want that to be almost right at black. And on the very corner here, that's where you're seeing this is really solid black. Now on our gain, which is our highlights, I'm going to do the same thing and just drag that down a little bit. Now the highlight that you're seeing here is represented in this light in the background. So we know that's blown out anyway. It doesn't matter because you know it's a light. If his skin was blown out, that would be a problem, but it's not. In our gamma, that's our mid-tone. So that's everything that's gonna be sort of sitting around the skin tone, uh, everything else in the background here. We'll bring that down a little bit. And we're starting to get a little bit more drama in there. And now what I wanna do is change the color of his skin a little bit. I'm gonna give this a little bit more saturation. So down here, it's at 50. I'm gonna just slowly start dragging it up to probably about 60. Yep, 60 looks good to my eye. And again, I'm just eyeballing this. In the shadows, I wanna introduce a little bit more blue. Uh, and I'm mostly looking at his skin tone right now. And it seems a bit counterintuitive to put blue in skin, but skin tones do have a lot of blue undertones. So bringing blue into the shadows here. In the mid-tones, I'm going to bring a little bit of orange in here. Now I'm just clicking and grabbing this little circle with inside the color wheel and doing micro adjustments and just pushing in towards those hues. So I'm pushing towards orange now with his skin. And now on the gain or the highlights, I'm going to bring that up towards red. That's looking pretty good to my eye. And then in the offset, this is where you can kind of do global tweaks. So I'm going to just play around with this and see which feels good to me. I think it's probably gonna feel a bit better going towards blue again. That feels nice. And then we're just gonna play with the luminance again here with this jog wheel. A Little bit moody is nice. I like that and uh, play a little bit with our contrast here. I think that's looking good. Now what we can do is we can just click the little O2 here on our node and turn that off and on. So that was what we got with our LUT and this is where we've taken it. So if I click this little bypass button up here, this will show you from our raw footage, which your like mind is blown now. You got so used to seeing that log footage earlier and you kind of got used to you know, how it looked in the edit. And then you're like, oh, you know, I'll put a little bit of a color grade on it and bam, we've got like proper color now. And we did that super quickly. Uh, now, again, I'm not gonna go any further with our color grading tutorial here because this is a beginner editor's tutorial. But what I am going to show you is if I right click on here and hit grab still, that's going to show up in the gallery section here. And what does that mean? It means I can now go along to every piece of footage that I shot with this camera and I should be able to just mouse my mouse over this and you'll see it's reflected. I right click and I can hit apply grade. There we go. That's now applied it to that piece of footage as well. So I'm just gonna grab all of these pieces of footage here and I'm holding down command as I click all of these, grabbing everything that I shot with that camera, scrolling along the timeline, still holding command here. That's all of our footage. I'm going to go up here, right click, apply grade. And now you see down here, it's all reflected in the grade. What we can do is we can go back through and just make sure that's all looking good. You know, it's not gonna be perfect every time, uh, but it will look pretty good throughout. Happy with that, although this is a different shot, so it's a little bit more orange. So I'm just gonna click here and go to my offset and just move it back to blue a little bit. I think that looks nice to my eye. These ones look good. I'm actually gonna add a bit more contrast to that uh, first one. There you go, a bit more drama. Uh, pull a little bit of orange out of his skin here. And take some highlight out as well. There we go, that looks pretty good. This one's nice and moody, but we want it to be moody because he turns the light on there. That looks pretty cool. Once the light comes on though, it's a bit, eh, it's a bit greeny. So I'm just going to play with the tint here and I'm gonna push it towards magenta and then pull the color temperature more towards your blue rather than your orange, uh, a little bit cooler. Again, this one, I'll just make it a little bit cooler. It's a little bit warm. And now we're into our stock footage. We're not gonna play with that too much because we know it's stock footage, it's okay. But we could go through and we could tweak all of these if we wanted. We could bring this down a little bit uh, and then go into here. Bring this uh, down a little bit as well, or up. Uh, but we're not gonna do that. Actually, this one could use a little bit more saturation, so let's just give it a little bit of a pump up. These ones look nice, that looks nice. Clicking through here, everything's looking good. It's basically just our B-roll that we wanna make sure works, because we know our interview pieces are working. 
B-roll is looking good. Everything's looking nice and vibrant. Uh, that bike's looking very vibrant here. So I'm just going to pull the um, saturation down a little bit there. That looks a bit better. The same with this. The saturation is very high on this. Pull the saturation back down to around 50. These look beautiful. Very happy with that. And it was such a quick color grade. So now that should be all done. We should have finished our edit. So we'll just go back and play through now just to see where we're at. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike, Bicycle Workshop. Well, this is my little business. Okay, it's looking really good, but I have realized that I actually haven't done any audio processing on his dialogue track. And you can see here when I play through it, and I'll just drag the volume down so I can talk over it, uh, down in our mixer here, you can see that it's clipping right into the red. So how can we get around that? I think the best way to do it in DaVinci Resolve, uh, as a beginner editor, someone who doesn't need to know too much about audio processing, uh, is to use something that's already built in. And you can go up to here and go to Fairlight FX for audio effects and go to Dialogue Processor. Drag this down to your Dialogue audio track. You can do this on individual clips, but it's better to do it on the entire track and let go. So let's play through it. I'm just gonna solo this track so I can hear it. I'm just gonna do it without it on. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike, Bicycle Workshop. You can see it's into the red. Uh, it's a little bit muffled. There's not a lot of dynamic going on there. So I'll play it back through and turn it on. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike, Bicycle Workshop. And it feels a bit teeny, doesn't it? So in here, go to your default and click Male VO. And this is going to change it for, I guess, more of a deeper voice. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike, Bicycle Workshop. That's sounding pretty good. Let's compare it to the original. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike, Bicycle Workshop. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike, Bicycle Workshop. I'm happy with it. It's as easy as that. We don't need to spend too much more time on it. This is a beginner tutorial after all. Let's unsolo this and uh, let's play it through. Hi, I'm Nello, and this is my business, Ride a Bike, Bicycle Workshop. <laughs> This is my little business. So at Ride a Bike, we restore bicycles, we service bicycles, we repair bicycles, but the, the core of the business is to reuse and upcycle already existing parts. So what we want to do here is give bicycles as much love as possible and bring them back to their, their former glory so people can love them and enjoy them again. Seeing something that was, was literally dead rusted away that somebody else has already considered that there is no more life left in this thing this object but that object is a bicycle and to me all bicycles have a life until they're literally broken in two pieces they've still got a life actually technically that apollo was the first one ever four or five years ago and it kind of just sat in my bedroom as a frame for literally two years and that was the literally the the little pebble rolling down the top of the the mountain which snowballed to to what we've got today now we've gone through a lot of different processes here but like i said i've really tried to stick to the basics. If you've never edited a video before, if you've never even looked at a program like DaVinci Resolve or Premiere or anything like that before, you should now be able to jump in, grab all of your footage, make all of your selects, bring that into a coherent story, add your B-roll, add your music, add your titles, do a bit of a color grade. The very last thing that we've got to do is export that so we can share it with the world. So let's go over to our Deliver tab here, making sure that we've got our out point right where we want it. At the moment, I'm happy to have a little bit of black after this and let this music fade out. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put it right at the end of that footage there. Out point, done. Hitting deliver tab down the bottom and you can see that's just transferred our footage over into this timeline here. On the left hand side, you've got uh, a bunch of different settings that you can use or you can go up to the presets and the presets are really good here. So if you're exporting for YouTube, which most of you will be, or Vimeo or Twitter or whatever it is, you can just click these uh, presets here and it will change a bunch of things for you depending on what you're selecting. 
or you can do a ProRes Master. Now this could be your highest quality, uh, you know, lossless. It's basically a big chunky file. You do one of these to keep for archival purposes or maybe uploading, but uh, it's not very efficient when you're uploading uh, onto the internet. Or you've got your H.264, H.265 Master, which will be similar to what your YouTube one will put out here. So we'll do it for YouTube for now. 1920 by 1080, 25 frames per second, MP4, H.264. This is basically all of the specs that you would want for a YouTube export. We'll call this Ride A Bike and we'll do it VO1 underscore 01 like we talked about earlier. We'll find our location. And then if you're really keen and you have your uh, YouTube linked, you can do upload directly to YouTube. But I like a little bit more control than that, so I'm not going to do that. I'm just exporting out to our computer for now. Down the bottom here, hit add to render queue. That's going to put it up into the render queue on the top right hand side here. And that means you can actually do multiple jobs at once. So you can get everything into the render queue and then render them all at once, say overnight if you wanted to. But we're gonna render this one out right now, hit render all and it will do its thing. And it's pretty quick. You can see it's going in, you know, better than real time. It's going to go a little bit slower when we start to hit things like these lower thirds that are animated. We've got all of our color grades and things like that on. But for this piece of video, it's not gonna take much time at all. So done, that's it. That's the process of editing. We've taken all of our raw footage, we've uh, put it together with our B-roll, we've put it together with our music, we've put it together with our assets from Envato Elements, and we've created a little micro documentary here in not that much time at all using the most basic tools in a free editing software. If you've never touched editing software before, go ahead and download DaVinci Resolve right now. Like I said, it's completely free. Rewind the video, follow my steps, and you'll be well on your way to becoming an editor. Now this of course was a beginner level tutorial and there's so much more to learn in DaVinci Resolve and video editing in general. Make sure you go ahead and get subscribed to the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel. You're probably watching right now on YouTube. Go down and hit subscribe if you're not already. So therefore you don't miss out on any of the great content we're putting out. You can learn heaps more about DaVinci Resolve, Premiere Pro, After Effects, Illustrator, Photoshop, so much more. Go and get subscribed today. And also while you're at it, go and check out Envato Elements. I've mentioned it a bunch throughout this tutorial, but there are great assets up there. You get unlimited downloads of all of these assets for a single monthly fee. You can cancel the subscription at any time, so there's really nothing stopping you from going and checking it out today. Also, I'll leave a link in the description below, not only to Elements, but also to the collection of assets that I've used today, if you do want to follow along and try some of the editing techniques that I've showed you. Again, thanks for being here. I'm so glad that I could take you through this. Leave a comment down below to let me know if there's anything else that you want to learn in DaVinci Resolve and anything I should be focusing on that I can bring to you on the Envato Tuts Plus YouTube channel. Until next time, happy editing.